There's a lot of bad news these days in the automotive industry. In St. Thomas, tossing 1,300 people out of work. And in St. Thomas, Ontario, it just got a lot worse for Doug Circum and many others. We're all in shock when it actually came down. What are we going to do? You know, it was like, for lack of a better term, the walking dead. St. Thomas is about to lose one of its largest employers, the Sterling Truck Plant. Before long, 1,300 jobs here will disappear. After 16 years, Doug Circum is trying to come to grips with a bleak future. In a few months, all of this will be gone. Uh, your trucks will be gone. Your parking lot will be empty. And the weeds will be starting to grow up through the cracks. Doug's already started looking elsewhere. But so far, no luck. Those of us that have gone and researched it a certain amount, we're not seeing a lot in Ontario, certainly not for manufacturing jobs. Nowhere has the resistance been stronger than in the automotive industry, which made this TV commercial a decade or so ago all the more remarkable. It was called the EV1, the envy of electrical appliances everywhere, and the first electric vehicle from the world's largest automaker, General Motors. But it wouldn't last long. After all the fanfare, GM decided to stick with its core business, gas guzzlers. By 2003, every electric car had been crushed and dumped in the California desert. For the past eight years, Ian Clifford has been building an electric car called the Zen right here in Canada and selling them in the U.S. Zen stands for zero emissions, no noise. The problem was that no Canadian province would allow them on the road. We found out that there was a tremendous amount of resistance at Transport Canada for this class of vehicle. And we were a little bit mystified as to why that was. Really couldn't figure it out. Ian Clifford argues his vehicles meet every federal specification and that they're only intended for urban driving, where the speed limits are low. And we've also said to Transport Canada, if you don't like the regulation, it's your regulation, change it. You know, we'll meet it, but, but recognize that low-speed vehicles are legal throughout the United States, throughout virtually every other jurisdiction on the planet, except for Canada. <laughs> then in the fall of 2008, a victory. The province of Quebec has announced the Zen will be legal on city streets triggering a launch party at Clifford's assembly plant in saint Jerome. There's obvious enthusiasm for this squirt of a runabout, which can go up to 80 kilometers before it needs to be recharged. Next year, Clifford says Zen will introduce a highway-ready electric car, more spacious, capable of speeds in excess of 120 kilometers an hour, with a revolutionary new battery system to keep it on the road far longer. So you get you know range comparable to internal combustion. You can recharge in minutes instead of hours. Like all of these massive, massive changes that I believe actually ultimately need to happen for mass adoption. And it's not only Ian Clifford who believes the electric car's time has come again. With the collapse of gas guzzler sales and all its layoffs, General Motors has made another about face, now pinning its hopes on a new electric vehicle called the Volt. GM's vice president of research and development, Larry Burns, admits the untimely demise of the EV1 was a mistake. Rather than stopping the EV1 program the way we did, I think many of us wish we would have been stayed in the game and take that next step. We learned a lesson from getting behind on hybrids, no question about that. That's why we're out in front here with the extended range electric vehicle, the Chevrolet Volt. It is something on which both General Motors and the guru of green, Herman Scheer, can agree. The um, car for the future will be the electric powered car. Uh, I have not a single doubt on that. That's because the electric car may well be the answer to the most troublesome question about renewable energy. What do you do when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? It's believed that in the future, electric cars will have the potential to be storage devices, capable not only of plugging in to receive a charge, but to feed electricity back to the grid when necessary. 
Larry Burns, the man in charge of the new GM Volt, sees it coming. This interdependence or synergy between the electric grid and transportation, we believe that's possible. We think that's an exciting opportunity because now suddenly you've got much more flexibility on how we use our energy resources for transportation, for industrial uses, and for home uses. After years fighting to get his zen on Canadian roads, Ian Clifford says change is coming too. We've got to start making this shift. So I, I think, you know, for me, the writing's on the wall. It's, it's going to happen. It's just a question of when. Canadian businessman Ian McClellan has seen it work. If here, he asked, why not in Canada? I just don't get the current federal government that seems to be stuck in this dichotomy. If you do what's right for the environment, it will hurt the economy or vice versa. Where I come here to Germany, I said, the more we help the environment, the more it helps the economy. This is the industry for the future because everyone, everywhere will need it in the near future. Renewable energies can only become cheaper. Conventional energies can only become more expensive. Some years people will cry for renewable energy technology. They will cry for that. There's more about this story and about the Fifth Estate on our website. It's easy to access at cbc.ca slash fifth. Stick with us. We'll be back in a moment.